Greetings, YouTube. I had uh, found myself thinking about Klingons recently, and specifically about them as a warrior culture. Now, as presented in the Star Trek universe, every Klingon I think we've ever seen has been either a direct warrior or like a warrior priest. In fact, the priesthood is like the least warrior-like we've ever encountered in the, in the Klingon um, society. They don't seem to have a caste system because they allowed Worf in, even though he had been raised by humans. He was able to show he had enough Klingon-like characteristics, um, and particularly mastery of the Batleth and some other Batleth and some other Klingon weapons, that he was considered good enough to be, you know, he's Klingon enough to be a Klingon. But let's let's take a look at a couple of real-world warrior cultures, and those being the samurai and Sparta. Now, in both cases of samurai, the samurai and Sparta. Um, even though they had a fairly high degree of sophistication amongst themselves, I mean, samurai were very sophisticated. They engaged in poetry, calligraphy, flower arranging. Um, they had a great fashion sense. They presented themselves well, as well as being masters of the bow and the sword and the horse. Remember, the Bushido was all about the mastery of the bow and the horse. The sword was not the import important weapon that it is in, uh, in, uh, in, in portrayed in most literature and fiction. That simply isn't true. It is the bow and the horse that was really um, important. So that warrior cult aspect had a full range of social accompaniments to it. But both of those, the Samurai and the, and the Spartans, only sat on top of a huge network that allowed them to be warrior cults. They could do this because under them were slaves. In this case of the Spartans, actual slaves. In the case of the Samurai, peasants, which were effectively slaves. So, if you think about that, what supports the Klingons? Where is the pyramid of people under them that allows them to be a warrior culture? Just the people that do design the weapons and the armor and the ships and all that stuff. The people that are the doctors and the farmers, because they're going to have farmers. And the fishermen and the hunters and the, and the ranchers and everything else. Where are they? I want to see them. Because I think that would create a deeper, richer Klingon culture. But just like so many other things in fantasy and science fiction, we have monocultures, with the exception of humans, who are allowed to have a thousand cultures. Um, but the monoculture is just so boring. But it's so easy. It's so simple. So we all use it. We all have used it. We're all probably still using it. But these people are being paid to present this stuff. So you think that maybe they we could hold them to a higher standard. They're not just gamers sitting around a table. There should be more depth to it. I want to see the support culture for the Klingons. And we don't see it. And I think that the culture just becomes a caricature, as opposed to something far more interesting. So, if anyone out there understands the Star Trek canon to a deeper level than I do, which probably isn't hard, um, do this, did they ever discuss the societal support structure for the Klingon warriors? Or is it just assumed that all Klingons are warriors? which makes for a very strange society. Um, so let's talk about why we put up with shallow interpretations of our stereotypes and our fictional universes and why we don't convince them, why we don't require them to be deeper and far, far more interesting.